As we look at where our society is today, you know, especially some of the negative aspects of what we see going on around us, many people have pointed to the absence of fathers as being one of the main contributing factors to our society's ills today. As a matter of fact, I found it interesting that having worked on this message this week, on Friday afternoon I received an email newsletter from the Refuge Pregnancy Center. And then I got a paper copy of it yesterday in the mail, and the first sentence in the main article stated, there is a father absence crisis in America. There is a father absence crisis in America. And there can be numerous reasons why a father may not be there and may not play a vital role in that family and in the raising of the children. In some cases, it could be due to those children being the result of a more casual relationship between the mother and the father rather than coming from the committed relationship of a man and a woman united in marriage. In other cases, it comes from divorce and broken relationships after marriage. Sometimes it's the result of men making bad choices in life and ending up in prison. Sometimes it's the tragic result of a father dying. In other cases, it can be from dads just being so wrapped up in their work or other interests that family and children aren't made a priority. And today it can even come, it can even come from the way society has redefined family and how there are sometimes two mothers and no father in the picture. And there can be other reasons. But too many families have been trying to function and too many children are being raised without fathers being present or active in their lives. I mean, some of you right here experienced losing a father in one way or another earlier on in life. And I can only imagine how difficult it must be to be without a father, especially in those younger years of life. But the Bible indicates that God has a special concern for the fatherless. Now, one of the first places we see that in Scripture is right after God gave the Ten Commandments. After giving those better-known commands, those basic commands, he went on to provide some other detailed direction about people relating to one another, including this one in Exodus chapter 22, verses 22 through 24. It says, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you afflict them in any way, and they cry out at all to me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath will become hot, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. So God is referring to families without dads there, wives who have been left as widows, children who no longer have a father. And he says, if you afflict them or mistreat them in any way, you had better watch out. When they cry out to me and I hear their cry, my wrath is going to get hot. Now, we all know individuals whom you don't want to be around when they get angry. <laughs> and you especially don't want to be the object of their wrath, the one that they're mad at. And that especially holds true of God. Now, not that God is hot-tempered or easily angered. No, we shouldn't picture him that way at all. You know, God is loving. And one of the descriptions that Scripture gives of him so often is that he's full of compassion and slow to anger. But that doesn't mean he doesn't get angry. And his compassion, his compassion is exactly what leads to his righteous anger in many cases. And that's the situation here. He has compassion on a widow and children without a father. He knows the tough position that puts them in. And for someone to take advantage of them and mistreat them angers a holy God. And he says, if you do that, you better watch out because I'm coming after you. You'll end up being killed. Your wives will end up widows and your children will be fatherless. Now, God has a special concern for the fatherless due to their vulnerability, and he doesn't like it when they aren't treated right. We're hearing a lot of calls for justice these days. And true justice, and we have to distinguish that sometimes, uh, not just getting the outcome that we hope will come about, but true justice 
is something we should all desire in society. There shouldn't be partiality. People should be treated equally under the law. The Bible calls for justice. And God often calls for justice in particular in relation to the fatherless. And when society doesn't enforce it, he takes care of it, he takes care of it himself. Over in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, it says this, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. God looks out for the fatherless and administers justice in their behalf. One of the Psalms declares this truth very plainly. It's uh, the 10th Psalm, the 10th Psalm, verses 14 through 18. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. It's talking about God there. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You, you will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may oppress no more. Here God is called the helper of the fatherless. And it says he will do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed. The fatherless are not without a helper. And what a great helper they have. God is watching out for them and he seeks justice for them and will do justice on their behalf. So God has a special concern for the fatherless and promises to be their helper. And that brings us to what I would consider our main text or verse this morning. And that's Psalm 68. And we'll read two verses here, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 68 verses 4 and 5. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name Yah, which is shortened version of, of Yahweh or Jehovah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. So not only is God a helper of the fatherless, but he takes it much farther than that here, doesn't he? Here God declares himself to be the father of the fatherless. I mean, it's one thing to, to help someone who is fatherless, you know, to, to kind of watch out for them, for, for the, watch out for that child or those children, to make sure you know, every once in a while that they have what they need and that no one takes advantage of them. But it rises to another level to step into that role as father to be there all the time, to be a father or at least a father figure or a male role model for that child, to do many of the things a father would do for that child, to love and care and provide for the child, to be an example for them to follow. God is not only a helper to the fatherless, He's the father of the fatherless. They may not have a human father, but they have a God who loves them and who is watching out for them. And that's how much he cares for them. And if God has a special concern for them, then so should we, shouldn't we? We need to pay special attention to the fatherless and all the vulnerable in our society and stand up for them and seek justice for them. It should anger us to see the vulnerable being mistreated. In Isaiah 1.23, God condemns the princes are those in authority for not defending the fatherless. And we need to stand up for those who need it in our day and seek for real justice and defend those who our society not only neglects but mistreats. Let's not have God condemning us for our failure to defend the vulnerable. But as important as that is, 
I believe the Lord wants us to apply this truth another way too. I believe he not only wants us to consider the physically fatherless in the world today, but what we could call the spiritually fatherless. Now as believers, we are blessed to know God as our father, aren't we? We've been adopted into his family because of our trust in the crucified Christ. We are part of the family of God. We can pray as the Lord taught us to pray, our Father in heaven. God is our Father who is present with us even now through his Holy Spirit. He's our helper, our guide, our advocate. Let's not take this wonderful truth for granted. We have a heavenly Father. We can go to him in prayer. He cares for us. He provides for us. We are his beloved children. But you know, there are a lot of folks around us who are fatherless. God wants to be their father. He wants to be the father of the fatherless. But they don't realize it or they don't believe it or they just refuse to accept it. They're going through life without their heavenly father. They're spiritual orphans. They're lost and wandering and getting into trouble many times. And it's easy to look down on them and to condemn them for that. But we also need to have compassion for them. We may not and should not like some of the things that they do. But if we remember who they are, if we remember that they are spiritually fatherless or orphans, maybe that will help us have the compassion for them that we need to have at the same time. I read something related to that this week in a letter that John Wesley wrote. He was writing to this other person about how being angry over sin isn't sinful. But in the middle of dealing with that subject, he said this. He said, this anger at sin, accompanied with love and compassion to the sinner, is so far from being a sin itself that it is rather a duty. He's saying we have a duty to be angry at sin. But notice that it's accompanied by love and compassion to the sinner. Now, we don't like what the spiritually fatherless are doing oftentimes, but we can still have love and compassion for them. Do you remember the classic story written by Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist? Oliver Twist? Maybe you had to read it in school. As I recall, and I tried to refresh my memory on some of it this week, you know, Oliver Twist was fatherless. He was an orphan who ended up out on his own on the streets of London. And he ends up making friends with another another orphan who then leads Oliver to become part of a whole group of orphans. But it turns out that all these fatherless children had come under the influence and power of a man named Fagin. He wasn't really out to help those fatherless children or to take care of them. He had turned them into a criminal gang of sorts that he used for his own profit. He had made them into a bunch of pickpockets and thieves. He had taken advantage of them and was using them for his own evil purposes. You know, that's part of the problem when people don't allow God to be a father to them. There are others who are ready and eager to fill that place in their lives, not for the good of those who are in spiritual need, but for their own selfish or sometimes political or often evil purposes. There are a lot of Fagans out there in the world. You know, you watch the news and you can spot them sometimes. You know, they're the ones that seem to to always show up and try to stir things up whenever certain issues and situations rise up. There are Fagans who try to turn peaceful protests into riots. There are Fagans who try to take an innocent situation and turn it into a public spectacle. There are Fagans who promote and incite things like racism and hatred and division. There are Fagans who take somebody who has been wronged or mistreated under their wings and use them for their own purposes. Well, they often claim to be there to help those in need, but more often than not, than not, they're just trying to help themselves in some way. And that's why it makes it tough sometimes to have compassion for the spiritually fatherless, because many of them are allowing themselves to be influenced by others. They may be doing wrong, but they're being deceived and abused 
and used uh, almost like pawns or puppets to do their master's bidding and sometimes don't even realize it. Sometimes we need to make a distinction between the Fagans, you know, those who are evil and bent on doing wrong and stirring up others to do wrong, and the spiritually fatherless who are being deceived and who are blind to reality and who are just going along with the crowd or are under the misguided influence of others. The Fagans in the world need to be resisted and exposed and fought against and defeated. But we need to have compassion for the spiritually fatherless who are under their influence. They need to have their blinded eyes opened. They need to realize that there's a better father, a heavenly father who loves them and wants to make them part of his family. And he's looking out for what's best for them, not what's best for himself. And of course, we know the one behind all the evil and wrongdoing and injustice is Satan himself. Now, if we're not allowing God to be our father, then actually Satan is our father, whether we recognize it or not. Remember one time Jesus was speaking to a group of Jewish people who were opposing him. When Jesus told them that, that they were doing the deeds of their father, well, they, they claimed that God was their father. But Jesus told them in John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil and the desires of, the, of your father you want to do. Unfortunately, there are a lot of spiritually fatherless folks, people who actually have Satan as their influencer and father, not just out in the world, but even among the religious, even in the church, among people who claim that God is their father. Those people Jesus spoke to, they thought God was their father. They claimed that he was based on the fact of their religious heritage, the fact that they were Jews. But, but they weren't following God. They were being used and manipulated by the devil. He was their real father. And there, there are church folks, even church leaders who claim to be Christian, but who are allowing themselves to be directed by Satan, who have turned away from the truth, forsaken God and his word, and have embraced the lies of the devil, the lies of our society today. Jesus went on to say about Satan that he does not stand for the truth because there is no truth in him. And then Jesus goes on to declare Satan to be a liar and the father of lies. Those in the church world today who are turning away from truth are turning away from God the Father and turning toward the father of lies, Satan himself. And people are embracing those lies and in some cases even think they're being good Christians for doing so. They think they're being loving and tolerant as they refuse to stand up against sin and evil in the world. So there are spiritual orphans like that all around us, even among the religious, even among those who claim to be Christian. And the point is, we need to have compassion for them. We need to see them as the fatherless as vulnerable people whom others are deceiving and using and taking advantage of. And we need to see them as people whom God has a special concern for. God has a special place in his heart for the physically fatherless and for the spiritually fatherless. And so should we. He wants to be a father to the fatherless. Now, while we hate the sin, we can love the sinner and pray for them and can point them to a father who loves them and who wants to bring them into his family. <clears throat> that article in the Refuge Pregnancy Center's newsletter, it ended by suggesting that the solution to this problem of absent fathers is to approach it one family at a time. One family at a time. And the solution to the spiritually fatherless is to reach out to one at a time and let them know God loves them and wants to be their father. If we know God is our father today, let's be so grateful for that. And let's have compassion and concern for those who don't. And if anyone here this morning, if you haven't entered into that kind of relationship with God, Jesus made a way for it to happen. Through faith in him and his death on the cross, we can have our sins forgiven and cleansed and be adopted into the family of God. You don't have to be fatherless spiritually. There's a heavenly father who loves you and who wants to give you a home with him now and forever. Put your trust in Jesus 
And you can go from being an orphan to being a child of God. 